Hello and welcome back to the Darkroom Gallery at 12 Main Street in Essex Junction, Vermont. You're here with me today to look at the exhibition called Mobilography, August 30th through September 23rd, 2012. Dan Burkholder was the juror for this exhibition. He did a fantastic job whittling down hundreds of images to the 50 or so we're going to see here today. Today we're going to review the exhibition and we're going to ask a lot of questions. I'm grateful to have Dan here to answer some of those questions and probably add a few more for us to think about in the future as well. We have a few words from a visiting artist. I'm really looking forward to diving much deeper into what has become a very interesting side of fine art photography. Let's take a look. It is an ever-changing world. Well, that's the nature of photography. And I, you know, one of the things I tell people over and over, if you don't like change, don't pick photography as your medium. Pick something like pottery, where there's been one change from the foot-driven wheel to the electrically driven wheel. Because right. if you don't like change, you're gonna be continually and perpetually frustrated in this world. And now, we're, one of the things that's so great about this show is we're seeing this level of maturity instead of every image being heavily filtered. And we'll, we can talk some about, like the uh, the Juror's Choice, an image that has a wonderful palette of tonality. But we're seeing a, a new level of fineness and refinement coming to iPhone and mobile photography in general. Okay. And we are still sort of in the midst of an app fad, would you say, at this point? Yeah, and it looks like it's never going to stop. Mm. Um, you know, the pace, I'll do with my finger. The graph of photography, since its inception, like 185 years ago, when Nieps made, you know, his first photograph, you know, the pace has always been about change. And the way we make images, the subject matter we pick, how we express the image has always been linked to the technology and the hardware, the chemistry, which of course is fading as a controlling element right. as we go from the classic era into the digital era. So now that that pace, it's always been that change we've always had. It's just the curve of change has just gone almost vertical. Okay. You know, with right. digital imaging in general, and then now this whole democratization process. We always you always hear the cliche that photography is the most democratic of all the media. In fact, one of the lines I use over and over when people say, um, "Well, I could do that." When they look at a photograph, they say, "Well, I could do that." And I always say, "Well, the point is, you didn't do that. <laughs> you could have been a brain surgeon also, but you didn't take that course in life." Yeah, how and, true. And but the creative person does take that course and they make the sacrifices or the extra effort to make that an important part of their life. You gotta get stuff out of your system. Mm. People are learning this new medium with their Androids and iPhones, and we're we're testing the water for the, all the different apps. So once we get past, and that's one of the beauties of this show, this is one of the first mobile photography shows where you're getting that feel of that maturation coming. You know, the people are, they've tried all the things, they've, they've stuck their toes in the water of the different apps, they've decided which ones are serious for their style, and it's sort of like, you know, putting together your ideal workflow.
So it's about finding the process for the individual. It's about yeah. finding an individual process. Yeah, which a which apps, apps? which apps and which which look what resonates with you. Right. You know, people used to say that you know they couldn't handle Photoshop because there were too many choices. So I said, well, you didn't. You know, these people that worked in the classic darkroom, you didn't walk in being completely overwhelmed by different developers and different toners. You had decided before you went in there. You had looked at work. What was kind of the look that, where you wanted to start? What right. work did you want to emulate? But of course, you know, overlaying your style on top of that. So you didn't have to learn every developer combination. You didn't have to learn every hardening or non-hardening fixer, and whether you were going to use polytoner or brown toner or sepia or selenium. So it's not a question of knowing every app. It's a question of learning which apps will help complement what your voice is, what you're trying to say with the, with right. the medium. Right. In this show, um, there'd be so few pieces I'd be hesitant not to consider fine art. It's, okay. it's that good. Okay. You know, I'd like to reference to Jerry Ulsman, one of my mentors, the master of the composite print. Mm. And he, you know, started during the era of classic photography and still works with multiple enlargers and putting multiple images together via optical projection and silver sensitized methods. But he would make his students always have a camera with them. Now at that time, that would do two things, it would make you more visually aware. Yes. But now since we automatically, you don't have to do that discrete step of pick up a camera as you go out the door. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have one in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it automatically, as it would then, makes us more visually aware because it's like having your wallet with you or your keys. Mm -hmm. So we have, we, there's that obligation on us. So yes, we're going to be making snapshots, but to, you know, to really put that extra effort into the creative process. So is, the, is that borderline that, you know, between the, the fine art image and the casual recording of everyday life, is that going to be blurred? Hopefully so. Mm. Hopefully so. That's just going to be another step in our evolution in the, in the medium of photography. Right. And let's face it, digital imaging, mobile photography, it's not going to be the last thing in photography. That, that's, that's our history, is one thing after another. You know, we may be sculpting with gamma rays in several years. We don't know, <laughs> but I promise you there'll be something else coming over that horizon. Right, which and it's going to be, be just as exciting. It's going to offer just the same challenges. We'll go through that learning phase where a lot of the work looks a little over-processed, mm -hmm. and then this new work will rise to the surface. And seeing the work, this is a lot of work that, is, that has risen. This is, this is good stuff. Wonderful. That's great. Great to hear. Thank you so much, Tim. Well, thank you. Yeah.
use, is it an iPhone that you have? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah. Do you use your iPhone solely oh, no. for your work? Okay. No, no, no. Mostly I use my larger camera. It's a Canon mm. 5D Mark II, but uh, my iPhone I use every day, so I use it a lot more right. than my other camera. A lot more. Okay. Yeah, I okay. Do. It's so accessible. Oh, yeah. That's the main reason. That yeah. and the artistic level of using your iPhone mm -hmm. because you have all those artistic applications on it, and I love to do post-processing. Right. And I right. have it right there. And right. Sometimes I have an idea of how I would enhance a picture I just took. Mm. And, oh, great. Yeah, so okay. that's why I use the iPhone a lot. Which is probably the best way to do it if you have an idea in your head beforehand of what you want the final product to look like. The more you know then about the apps themselves, yes. the better you can apply, right? Yes, okay. and Dan introduced us to new apps, which I had never heard of before, so oh, I saw in some of them what I can use, and some I don't think I'll use that much, but that's the whole purpose of the class. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for joining me here again at the Darkroom Gallery in Essex Junction, Vermont for this current exhibition, Mobilography. This has been a wonderful show, mainly because it's given us so much to think about. Each of us has access to cell phones. Each of us has access to cell phone cameras, even if we don't own one. Let's think carefully about all that we've discussed today moving forward and imagine all that we could do with our cell phone cameras and all that will be done in the future. It's an ever-changing field. I'm really looking forward to seeing how everything pans out, what the next changes are. They will be immense for sure, Dan Burkholder agrees. Thank you very much again, Dan, for your time and energy put into this fantastic exhibition, Mobilography. I'll see you next time, bye-bye.